Paul Tudor Jones is one of the world's best traders, with a net worth of around $8 billion. Now, one of his trading secrets, which was uncovered by Tony Robbins in Money Master the Game, was his ability to take advantage of asymmetric returns. This is being able to risk $1 to make $5. And this way, you can be wrong four out of five times and still not lose any money. Now, with the US being in one of the worst financial positions in decades, wars breaking out all over, many people seek the advice and wisdom of Paul Tudor Jones. And so, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the biggest takeaways of a recent interview that he did, including his thoughts on all the geopolitical tensions going on right now and what it means to investors. Then why the US is entering a death spiral when it comes to the bond market. And then we'll finish with the two investments he called out to be in, in times of maximum uncertainty. Okay, first up, anyone who reads the news will be getting bombarded with news of war and destruction all around the world. So how does Paul Tudor Jones see the current situation right now? We now have possibly three theaters where we're gonna have geopolitical challenges. We've got the Middle East and Israel, obviously the Ukraine and Russia, and then at some point down the road, Taiwan and China. So it's a really, I, I would say since, certainly since I was born, it might be the most threatening and challenging geopolitical environment that I've ever seen because you have four nuclear powers, uh, three of whom are led by sociopaths, and that would be China, Russia, and North Korea. Obviously, those leaders have zero accountability, responsibility to anyone but themselves, and they have um, not an ounce of humanity in their bones because they regularly disappear, both their friends and their enemies. And then the fourth, Iran is led by someone who thinks God is talking to him, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very threatening time. So that is also happening. At the same time, the United States is probably in its weakest fiscal position since certainly World War II with debt to GDP at 122%. So it's a really tough time for, I think, the moral voice of the world, certainly been the leader since World War II, it, it's, a, it's a really difficult time. And so, is the current situation bad? Well, only the most threatening and challenging geopolitical situation in his lifetime. And then add to that that the US is in its worst fiscal position since World War II, meaning they can't cope with a debt to GDP ratio of 120%. Now, if I went to the bank to get a loan or mortgage and my debt to income ratio was 120%, they would say, sorry, but you, sir, are going bankrupt. If only I could also print my way out of it. And so, essentially, a tough period going on around the world, including for the US. Okay, next up, as I've mentioned on this channel, the bond market is having one of its worst periods in hundreds of years. And Paul explains that it's caught in a death spiral. The fiscal situation we have is one that's really clear uh, and there are obvious remedies for it and it's something that we're gonna have to deal with. It's not part of the political dialogue yet. If, if you just think about what's happened in, since really in the last three or four months, we're getting ready. I don't know if we'll have a Minsky moment in the bond market. I don't know if we'll have that point of recognition, but we're gonna have the grinding reality that with 122% of debt to GDP, as interest costs go up the United States, you get in this vicious circle where Higher interest rates cause higher funding costs, cause higher debt issuance, which cause further bond liquidation, which cause 
higher rates, which put us in an untenable fiscal position. They only look at one side of the equation, which is that we have to cut spending. They are unwilling to talk about the other side of the equation, which is we're going to have to raise taxes. You cannot do this simply by cutting spending. We have and so higher interest rates lead to higher funding costs, which leads to higher debt issuance, which leads to further bond liquidations, a doom loop. Now, essentially, there are only two ways to grow a business, and the government is just one big business. You can either cut costs, which all things being equal will create more profit, or you can increase the revenue. And all things being equal, this also creates more profit. Well, for the government, the revenue mainly comes from taxes. So he's saying to get out of this fiscal nightmare of more debt than income, the government has to raise taxes. However, with the US election coming up next year, which leader wants to come to the table and say, here is my promise to you, I am gonna be the one that raises taxes on all of you. Which means, what are they likely going to do instead? Well, what they've always done. Print their way out of the problem, add to the ever-growing bar tab, and then just pass it on to the next guy. Okay, and finally, in times of recession, which investments does this billionaire like? Well, he specifically called out two. I think now the barbarous relics, and I would lump gold and Bitcoin together. I think they probably take on uh, a larger percentage of your portfolio than historically they would because we're going to go through both a challenging political time here in the United States and we're going to go through, we've obviously got a geopolitical right. situation. So I would, I would say... But high interest rates were supposed to be the thing that was actually going to be unhelpful to Bitcoin. Well, it, and I think on a relative basis, look what's happened to gold. It actually has been. Clearly, it suppressed it. So you, you know that more likely than not, we're going to go into recession. There's some pretty clear-cut recession trades. The easiest are the yield curve gets really steep. Term premium goes into the back ends of, uh, of debt markets, right, into, into 30-year, 10-year, and 7-year paper. Uh, the stock market typically right before a recession declines about 12 percent. That's probably going to happen at some point from some level. Uh, and you look at the big shorts in gold, more likely than not in a recession, the market's typically really long assets like Bitcoin right. and gold. So there's probably a $40 billion worth of buying that has to come in to gold at some point between now and if that recession actually occurs. Um, so yeah, I, I like Bitcoin and I like gold right here. Paul Tudor Jones is one of the world's best traders with a net worth of around $8 billion. He says right now is the most threatening and challenging geopolitical landscape of his lifetime and a very challenging time for investors. He says the bond market is caught in a bit of a doom loop with higher interest rates, leading to higher funding costs, leading to higher debt issuance, leading to further bond liquidations. He says the US fiscal problem is in fact quite quite clear. They can't just cut costs and they must increase taxes. But which candidate is going to say that in an election year? And so what does this all mean? Well, it ultimately means the money printer has to be turned back on and everyone will pay for it via inflation. And finally, he says going into recession, the stock market typically drops around 12% and the two investments which he likes and thinks should be a larger part of the portfolio were gold and Bitcoin. 
So there you are guys, hope you enjoyed. Now you tell me, what do you think about the thoughts, ideas, and suggestions of Paul Tudor Jones? However, just remember to get rid of 100% of the comment spam and trading bots that plague YouTube comments. We are trying out the new Super Thanks commenting system. So to get your question or comment read and replied to, or just to say thanks, then use Super Thanks below and for now if you did enjoy anything in the video then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does and i'll see you in the next video bye for now